Use the graph of the function below to find the following. A, the intercepts, B, domain and range, C, intervals on which the graph increases, decreases, or is constant, and D, whether it is even, odd, or neither. All right, so let's start with the intercepts. You can see visually from the graph that we have three intercepts. We have two x-intercepts and one y-intercept. So let's talk about the y-intercept first. That would be right here. The y-axis is intercepted at y equals two. So the y-intercept is basically at y equals two, or in other words, the point x equals zero and y is two. So that's your y-intercept. Now for your x-intercepts, you're going to say that x is equal to negative pi over two and x is equal to pi over two. Or in other words, the points plus or minus pi over two comma zero. So those are two different points, right? Positive pi over two, zero, and negative pi over two, zero. All right, so let's look at the domain and range for the function next. Remember that the domain for the function are all the x values for the points that exist on the graph of the function. And the range is basically all the y values that exist for the points of the graph on the function. So basically when I look at the range, I'm looking at the y values, and when I'm talking about the domain, I'm looking at the x values, right? Okay, so let's look at the x values. It looks like x values exist on the graph from negative pi all the way to pi, right? So the span on the x-axis that the domain covers is basically from negative pi up to pi inclusive. So when I say inclusive, I mean we want to include those values because there is actually a point, right, at each of those values, correct? And that means that I need to use brackets instead of parentheses when I express the domain. All right, so for the range, it's the same idea, but this time we'll be looking at the y-axis. So it looks like we have points along the y-axis from everything from two to negative two or vice versa from negative two to two, right? So I think the range here includes negative two and goes up to positive two inclusive, right? And again, inclusive because we actually have points at those locations. All right, from here, let's discuss the intervals on which the graph increases, decreases, or is constant. Well, you can see that as you move left to right, and that's how we view this, so as we're moving left to right on the x-axis, right? So if we're moving in the general direction from left to right, you can see that it looks like the graph is sort of going uphill, right? And then it hits this y-axis and it begins to come downhill after that. So the general trend here is basically that it's increasing from the portion of the x-axis from negative pi up to zero on the x-axis. So remember, you have to describe the x-axis, right? So it looks like it increases from negative pi to zero. So that's your increasing portion. And then it looks like it stops there at the top and begins to come down. So we'll say that it decreases from zero down to pi on the x-axis, right? So we're not including zero, of course, because at zero it sort of hits this kind of peak and comes down, so it's neither decreasing nor increasing at that point. And likewise, when we're at you know the negative pi and the pi, we can't really include those points as being places where it's increasing or decreasing, so we're always gonna use these parentheses here to divide up the different regions. But certainly we can say that it's generally increasing on the left side of the graph, and on the right side of the graph, it's kind of going downhill or decreasing. And so that's basically what we found. There are no places on the graph where it's constant. All right, and the final step is to say whether it's even, odd, or neither. All right, so there's an important theorem that you want to remember about graphs and whether they're even, odd, or neither. The theorem basically says that a function is even if and only if its graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So in other words, what they're saying is that if a graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, or in other words, you're saying if the graph has like a mirror image on the other side of the y-axis of itself, then the graph is the graph of an even function. All right, so what the theorem is saying is that if a function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, it implies that the function is an even function. And symmetric to the y-axis basically means there's a mirror image, right? So if you look at, for example, the right-hand side of this graph in blue, and you look at the left-hand side here, using the y-axis as the dividing point, they look like exact mirror images. If I folded the graph in half at that place, you'd see they lay on top of one another perfectly. That means that it has y-axis symmetry. And it turns out that if it has y-axis symmetry, the function is definitely even. So we're gonna say here the function is even. Now, it works the other way too. If the function is even, of course, then the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. But here we're gonna use the fact that it has y-axis symmetry to prove that it's even. 
Now for odd functions, the function is odd if and only if its graph is symmetric with respect to the origin.